Did you know Iron Man's ARC reactor was inspired by real nuclear batteries, which power satellites and other cool technology in space and deep in the ocean? Welcome to Engineering Superheroes. Who hasn't dreamt of shooting webs, lifting up cards, and flying high in the sky like a superhero? Of course, these are crazy stories just in our imagination, right? What if I could make it a reality with engineering? This Spider-Man power sounds pretty crazy to me. Radioactive spider? Really? Yeah, maybe not that crazy. Perhaps the radioactive part is too much. But spiders are fantastic animals and their sticky webs are one of the most impressive materials I have ever seen. Did you know spider webs can be twice as tough as Kevlar? It's like superhero stuff! Kevlar is a strong synthetic fiber created in 1965 by a company called DuPont. It is so strong you can make racing tires out of it or bulletproof vests, just like the ones from Batman. You can even stop bullets! And knife cuts if you weave it with steel fibers. Nature has a fascinating way of making materials. When spiders spin their webs, they create an intriguing weave pattern, which allows it to stretch up to five times their length. But unfortunately, scientists have failed over and over to replicate it in the lab. Let's farm spiders then, so we can take the webs and make our superhero suits out of it. That's a great idea! Sort of. But there's probably a better way to get nature to work for us. Scientists have modified the genes of farmed silk worms, so when they produce the silk cocoons, they are producing spider-silk hybrids. Not quite the same as a real spider web, but this can give you a good picture of what that radioactive spider would do to Peter Parker. His genes were modified with the steam. Maybe the radioactive part is not that crazy after all. Let me try this. No! In 2019, the North Face, together with Spider, created the first readily available spider silk jacket, a true spider vest. <sighs> not worthy. If spider webs are tough, I guess we can make even Captain American shield with spider webs. That's a good idea. Spider-Man does build some spider shields from time to time, but Captain American shield is a different story. It's a composite. Let's talk superhero language. Captain America Shield is a composite of vibranium, which is adamantium steel alloy, and something else. The shield actually fell into a bucket full of scraps from other projects. Maybe you don't know exactly what is in it. It's called Proto Adamantium. Because they like cool names at Marvel. Do you know why it needs to be a composite? Sometimes, to get the most of a material, we need to combine them to make it work. Like sweet and sour, or sweet and salty. Yeah, let's stop the food analogies. I'm getting hungry over here. Concrete, for example, combines the strength of cement with the toughness of steel. By having a steel bar in the middle of cement, you are sure that during an earthquake, bridges would not fall down catastrophically at once, as the steel bar would absorb some of the vibration, and so it would bend and not break. Mmm, like chocolates absorbing the load of my bite. Just like chocolates, indeed. Chocolates are composite of dairy products like butter, sugar, and cocoa. Butter itself can be very soft at room temperature. And if you can smash it on your own hands. Ah, not a great idea. But anyways, it will become harder and harder as you increase the loads of cocoa and sugar, making it the right texture for you to enjoy. Great chefs spend years trying to find the perfect texture and flavor combination, as one does affect the other. But let's take the milk chocolate versus a dark chocolate, for example. They are very different in their microstructure. I can't see a difference. Of course not. It's a microstructure, so it's very, very small. The particle is so small, you need a microscope to actually look at it. For example, if you take one of the microscopes like this, you can see now there are three main components of the chocolate. The continuous stuff you can see is the butter. The large grains is the sugar and the small ones are the cocoa grains. If you vary the shape of the cocoa and sugar particles and how much you use, everything changes. Is that why one chocolate snaps and the other doesn't as much? Exactly. Snap test is a very rudimentary way of doing mechanical tests. But testing the mechanics of chocolate, but actually of any material, is really important so you can quantify what is strong and what is not strong, or if something that is suitable or not suitable for a certain application. I have an idea. What if we drop increasing weights on the chocolate to see when it breaks? 
That way, we know the max weight it can handle and we can see which is stronger. Sounds like a great plan. Let's do this. Woo! For the experiment, you're gonna need a milk chocolate and a dark chocolate. We recommend the 85% cocoa and the extra creamy by Linden. We also gonna need a sheet of paper, tape, string, ruler, and many, many pens, about 40. Take 10 pennies and wrap them with the paper. Then use the tape to create a paper tube, not too tight. Seal one of the sides with the tape. Now use the string and tie a knot around the pennies. Take a 15 inch long string and tape it to the wall. You just created your own battering ram. Lift the ram, keeping the string straight and let it go. Mark on the wall where the ram hit it. Now take the paper of both chocolates and fold them till they become two hard thick rolls or like a triangular shape. Tape them to the wall in between the ram hit mark about two inches apart. Keeping a distance between them no greater than four blocks of your chocolate. Now, tape four connected squares of your milk chocolate to the rolls, leaving an empty area behind the chocolate. It is time for fun. Straighten the string and use a ruler to have it at nine inches. Pull back the string about seven inches. Aim for the chocolate and let it go. Did it break? No. Well, increase the pen by size and try again until it breaks. Do the same then to the dark chocolate. Starting again with only 10 pennies. You can pause the video here to complete this task or do it later. Wow, that's a lot of chocolate. How many experiments did you run? <laughs> well, what you'll see is that most likely the milk chocolate breaks first. And more importantly, it breaks differently. This one broke very deliciously. This one too. The milk chocolate broke in a so-called ductile mode because it has more butter, so it deforms the chocolate, absorbing the energy of the impact before it breaks. It is a slow deforming light fracture. The dark chocolate shows a brittle fracture where there is not much deformation and the energy is absorbed at once at the fracture load. It is fast and clean. This is all because of the amount of different ingredients, like sugar, cocoa, and butter. Remember the microscopy? The cool thing is that if you take the milk chocolate, which has been frozen, and do the same experiment, it will break just like the dark chocolate. Try it home. Because now, the coat does not allow the butter atoms to move during the impact, so it cannot deform. Atoms are the tiny little things that make up materials. They can be organized in different ways, form bones among, them, among themselves, and now so can slide against each other, unless it's too cold, of course. Just like the Titanic. Great point. Engineers design ships so that if they hit something in the water, like an iceberg, they do not break and sink. The metal is designed to deform and not fracture. But for the Titanic and other old ships, they didn't know that some metals are not so different than chocolates. And the cold waters make them break, like the dark chocolate in a fragile fracture. Oh, Leonardo, if only he was a material engineer. But wait a minute, what does it have to do with Captain America? Oh, of course, Captain America Shield. Captain America Shield is a composite perfectly designed to absorb high impacts, just like Thor hammering. Proto Adamantium, I remember. Well, Proto Adamantium is a fictional material. But its real version, titanium, is very much in use for military application in shields, tanks, because it's light and strong. Titanium, that's it? Well, titanium would solve one piece of the Captain American proto adamantium puzzle, but not all. We noticed something else mixing in it, like to form the composite. So while we don't have an idea what is in there, my guess is it's something called piezoelectric crystal. Piezoelectrics are crystals that can turn impact into electricity, just like flash rocks to make fire. Did you know some lighters still use piezoelectric powders to create a spark? Piezoelectric crystals spark because of the way their atoms are organized. I told you it was about the atoms. 
The crystal is formed by positive and negative atoms called ions. These ions are arranged in a way to cancel the charges out. One positive within one negative, two positives with two negatives. The charges are always neutralizing each other. But if not, like when an impact misplaced them, the total charge will be different and BAM! The impact energy becomes a spark. That's why Captain America's shield sparks sometimes. Exactly. In the shield, these electric crystals are dispersed in the vibranium mix. And then, when the shield is impacted by Thor's hammer, the impact energy is dissipated by creating these sparks. Wait, is that also how Black Panther's suit works, right? The suit absorbs the impact energy over and over, and when the Black Panthers want to, he releases all the energy at once. Exactly! The suit has a mechanism to store the energy from the piece of crystal, like microcapacitors, so you can control when you release it. Wow, this is mind-blowing! Yeah, the science of superheroes is indeed mind-blowing. But you know what is more mind-blowing? What one can do with all this knowledge to solve real-life problems. You'd be able to solve most challenging problems that we face these days, like our energy needs. But this is for another episode. See you then for more Engineering Superheroes. <laughs>